Well, hello everybody and welcome back to this episode of G Bears Off Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert. Today I'm going to answer a question by a new subscriber, Charlie Cahill, who uh, asked about uh, connecting a PMA or permanent magnet alternator. Uh, remember, there's two different types of those um, turbines. You got a PMA and then you got PMG. A PMG is a permanent magnet generator. And then you have others that are uh, junk that come from China and so forth and so on. Like the last one I had that no matter what I did with it uh, here, no matter how I connected it, I still never saw um, even 200 watts out of a 400 watt um, PMA. So I, I stepped up and I bought the KT5 12 volt, three wire, three phase um, PMA and that has five blades on it and it's uh, it's good for winds up to 90 miles per hour and it's 1865 watts so what we're looking at here is this is my cheap 150 amp uh, Chinese made meter that I have tied in and you can see uh, it's running through this AP WP is watts peak that's amp hours that's volts max that's watts uh, uh, amps peak, uh, watts peak, so forth and so on, okay? So, this is telling me right now that I'm only taking in 2.5 to 1.8 back and forth and 32 to 42 watts. That's because the wind has just cal calmed down. A few seconds, fact, seconds ago I was out here and there, this was up by 300 watts. So, this unit uh, really does its job. It, it's great. And you can see the peak watts 783. So that was, that's pretty close to eight um, 100 watt panels. Uh, this is, uh, the winds have not gone over, I would say 25, 26 miles per hour. And that's what I've, I've been getting out of it. All right, for the connection, three wires, these three black wires, they come down from my PMA. I'm using 10 gauge wire stranded AWG. The reason that you want that is because you're working with um, uh, voltages that are actually DC voltages. There's three of them coming in and they're pulsing back and forth. That makes it an AC input, but you're still going to go with your um, stranded wires. That click you just heard was my dump load, which is also tied to my system. And that dump load has been running. So here's the heater and here's my gauge. So let's put it on there. Uh, so like 150, 368 uh, degrees. So that's put off some pretty good heat there. And uh, that's because the winds and the sun are both uh, charging right now. So it's more electricity than I need as you can see up here at the 14.3 level. So this will probably click back in in a little while again and you'll probably hear it. Okay, I've got fuse blocks in here coming in at 60 amps. The reason I do that is because I wanna protect my stuff down the line. If for some reason a winds come up to a point where they um, are putting out excessive electricity out from my PMA, before it gets down and, and damages my equipment down here, it's gonna blow fuses. And then it's gonna freewheel, which is probably gonna damage my PMA unless I get back to it right away. I always keep a bunch of extra 60 amp fuses handy just in case. All right, that comes into a rectifier. All right, you hear rectifier, everybody gets scared. They go, oh my God, it's a rectifier, what's that do? Okay, all it does is it takes three wires of AC um, power coming in and then transfers it transfers it to DC going out. So this is 12 volts AC coming in. This is uh, 12 volts DC going out. Okay, so on the on the input side is the PMA. That's bringing the power into this unit in, in an AC uh, voltage and that's alternating current. Okay, so now it's changing it to d DC or direct current and that, that comes out and that goes into the source of my gauge here and then out of the gauge it goes right straight to the batteries. Okay, so this is the negative pole right here on the black and then on the positive 
I put an inline DC breaker in here. Oh, there's the click. And you see the yellow light on. So I am dumping um, electricity right now because I've got way more than I need. All right, so I was just putting out 100 watts there, 101 watts. Uh, it's really doing 124, 150. So, so it's really uh, supplying me all the electricity I need. Now I have 18 six volt batteries tied in series parallel. That means that um, two of the batteries are tied in series by hooking a positive to a negative and that's given me two sixes, give me a 12 volt battery pack. I'm using um, the six volt golf cart batteries because these are deep cycle batteries and they're designed to take a fast charge and to um, power down over a long period of time, like running a golf, car, uh, golf cart through the course for 18 holes. Then it comes in and gets plugged in on a rapid charger and charged again so it can go back out. So that's why I, I use these. If I had my choice, my druthers, I would have used um, uh, forklift batteries, the ones that run electric forklifts like you see in Home Depot and stuff like that. Okay, those batteries are, are really super strong and they're designed to really take a beating and run a week at a time. Uh, if, if the forklift is running eight hours a day, they may have to charge it at the end of the day, they may not. All right, so getting that straight. Now, the question that um, Mr. Cahill was asking was, uh, do I use uh, the hybrid controller here? Because this has the solar here and it has the wind here, and it has an automatic dump load built in. No, I don't. I did originally, when I first had my, um, my first 400 watt Chinese PMA, and I never did get what I thought I was, should be getting through that unit. And it was always reading very low outputs. So I did some research on it, and I found out that uh, most of the PMA, uh, reputable PMA people don't recommend you use solid state controllers like that for your PMA. They recommend that you do it this way. You come in to a rectifier, go through a gauge so that you know what your, your numbers are, and then go straight to the batteries. Now, if you're using a DC or a PMG uh, permanent magnet generator, it only has two wires. It has a positive and a negative, okay? Now, on those, you just come straight in, go through your gauge, and go straight to the batteries. All right, now that's gonna charge the batteries on a regular basis, so you have to have a dump load built in. Otherwise, you are going to blow up those batteries because you got all this extra, extra electricity and no place for it to go. Unless you're running a bunch of stuff inside the, uh, your cabin, you, you, you don't want to bulge these batteries. You see how they're all nice and flat. There's no bulges in them. But what this does is this is connected straight to the battery. And then the, the discharge lines, or this, this is a discharge line here, that runs up to the heating element. So the only thing that's hooked up to this is battery and load. That's it. Okay, you don't hook up anything else to this except battery and load. You don't go through your um, controllers or anything like that. This is a controller all built for it by itself. And this is designed just to handle the electricity that's uh, too when you get too much electricity going towards your batteries. So this is usually set for 14.2. So you can see my, uh, my controller there says 14.0. It just dropped from 14.1. So there's 14.1. So I still have a lot of electricity coming in. So this, this uh, load is gonna stay on and keep heating that element. And this is a heat shield behind it so the wall doesn't get hot. And uh, there's a, an air gap behind there. I can put my hand behind there, it is not hot. But right now I'm sure that, let's see what, what the uh, reading is on this right now. Uh, where's my little, there, there's my little light. Uh, wow, let's uh, change that and try again here. Wow, 1,900 something degrees. That's a lot of heat. Okay, so that's, that's putting out a lot of um, heat. Now, in the future, I will be changing those wires 
and they're going to run out the back wall here, run over to my outdoor shower. I do have a 300 watt heating element in there. This is a 300 watt element. So I can make hot water instead of just wasting electricity. And then I'll, if I have more than I need, I'll also run a heat, this heater unit out to the uh, chicken coop for the winter and keep the chickens warm. All right, so back to the electricity. I know I've gone through this before, but I do have new people coming in who don't, have, or don't want to go through my 400 videos just to find this information. So I'm just going to run through this real quick. We'll get out of here. All right, now if you're using a rectifier, you want to put it on a heat sink or do like I did here. I have a fan connected and I have that connected directly to power. So the fan runs 24 seven and that keeps this unit cool here. So I don't have extra heat coming out of there, especially that it's bolted right on wood as it was pointed out to me. And that's going to be an insulator on the back side. So it's going to uh, create some heat. But the fan here is blowing right past that all the time. And I can put my fingers on there. That is not hot. Matter of fact, if I took my uh, gauge out and read that, it'd probably only be about 70 degrees. And the same thing with this unit. Um, this, this unit does not uh, get hot. And it won't get cold because I've got the heat from the battery room here and I've got the heat from the um, heating element that keeps this room pretty darn warm at all times. All right, just wanted to cover that. Now, as you notice, I sound pretty good, don't I? Well, that's because I got up this morning and I was feeling like I was backpedaling a little bit on the getting better thing. I had a little bit of pain back in my back. I got up, had breakfast, and went out and did my thing at the outhouse, and I started feeling a little bit better, but still not to the best. I was still a little lightheaded. And then I thought to myself, you dummy, you might have uh, something going on inside that could use a little bit of natural antibiotics. So I got out my uh, Echinacea and Golden Seal, and I popped three of those tablets uh, about two hours ago. And I had fr fruit for lunch. And I feel great. I got out and cleaned the chicken coop. I re-nested the chicken coop. I gave them, refreshed their water. I refreshed their food. I got into the garden house. I, I dumped the, um, the stuff I cleaned out of the chicken coop into the bottom of my grow box. That'll get covered over with soil. And uh, just feeling great. The chickens were out here, uh, free ranging while I was doing all that. And they love digging holes right here and taking their little dust baths. And that, all that dirt that's on there is all from them uh, flipping it over themselves and getting that, their dust bath going. All right, you can see my turbine up there is kicking out electricity like it's supposed to. And apparently we're getting contrails today, not chemtrails, except for the ones that they did earlier. All of those clouds were originally starting off being chemtrails. And now they're clouds. <clears throat> and they started all in that area down there, and that's what we have. So, all right. I promised that I would show you the purple desert carpet. Well, it's kind of hard to see. If you look out there, you look at the, all the short grassy area, it's got that purple hue to it. And then there's a lot of green growing around all the different bushes. Okay, so I don't know what those plants are. I could look them up on one of my apps, but I've been too busy with other things. So let me get out here and get a little closer to this stuff. I'm going to show you um, these little yellow and purple flowers like that are all over the desert. They, they cover the whole desert as far as the eye can see and sometimes when you're driving down the road it looks just like a giant purple carpet as you can see the purple flowers right here and i'm not sure what these plants are called um, when i put it in my app it came up saying unknown so if anybody knows what they are uh, put it down in the comments so everybody knows same thing with this one right here i don't know what this plant is and uh, it says unknown. It almost, the leaves almost look like sage, but I'm not sure. Anybody know what it is? Um, chide in below, let us all know. All right, those are the 
basic plants that we have around here. Uh, these bushes, um, I've been told those are called greasewood. And then we have these uh, other plant right here that has these little tiny white flowers on them. And they have these uh, leaves on them. And I looked this one up before the flowers got onto them. And that was called hawk's beard. And there's a bunch of different hawk's beards, but this is one of the hawk's beard plants. And um, the chickens love the little green leaves that come off of those. But now that they've gone to flower, they don't really pay much attention to them anymore. All right, let's move on down to the garden house while I got a couple of minutes left here. And uh, I guess this is a little bit longer video than uh, the ones have been in the past couple of days. And that's because I'm feeling better. And we're moving down, moving down. Take you for a little quick outside tour here of the um, garden house. And uh, there's all my, my plants in here, my radishes, my beets, my carrots, my cilantro, my onions, all of that stuff, my kale. Uh, that, that's my oregano over there. I got some more uh, radishes growing, uh, more cilantro. My tomatoes uh, tipped over. I'll have to stand those back up again. And uh, then I got some uh, onions and stuff and carrots over in these buckets that all have to be transplanted. And of course, all my trees over there. And here's the new extension of the garden house. And that's where I left off, was getting ready to tack that down. And uh, I had already put some nails along the base of this one to hold this in place, but I still got more to do. I want to put wood strips on there, and that's when all of this started. I was cutting the wood strips. So I put the pieces of scrap wood I had and my ladders up against the bottom to hold the wire in place so the critters can't just run right in and destroy my plants. And uh, that's where we're at right now. And it looks like something has been digging and playing right in here. I don't know what, but uh, I think I will put uh, one more of these boards right up against there, or even that ladder. Um, should make sure that they don't dig underneath and get in under that wire. All right, everybody, that's all. Remember, if you like my videos, give me a thumbs up down there, please. And uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have subscribed, uh, thank you very much. Don't forget to share. There is, there is a place down there where you can click share. And you can share through any other type of media, whether it be a text message, email, um, Twitter, and whatever you, any way you want to share it, you can share it. Okay? That's about all for today. The girls are all inside for the night. Their food and water is all filled up, and I'm ready to go in myself and get some more fruit. Get some cleanup done because I haven't done much in the last couple of days. Lay on my back. G there, signing off.